in the tapestry of television history, where moments and memories intertwine like vivid threads. There's a classic gem that once graced our screens, captivating hearts and etching nostalgia into the annals of time. Ah, that girl, those two simple words evoke a rush of sentiment, a wave of recollection that carries us back to the golden age of television. Can you recall the very first time your eyes met Anne Mary's infectious smile, her zest for life and dreams that burned like a meteor streaking across the night sky? Perhaps it was that quirky, lovable apartment in New York City, where dreams clashed with reality, giving birth to a cascade of laughter and lessons. Or maybe it was the way you found yourself rooting for Anne who danced to the beat of her own aspirations, pushing boundaries and embracing the unknown with a mix of courage and composure. As we wander through the corridors of memory, there's a glimmer of those memorable moments that remain etched in the chambers of our minds. The slapstick mishaps that painted the canvas of Anne's journey, the colorful characters who waltzed into her life, leaving footprints of humor and wisdom. Each episode was a brush stroke, adding to the masterpiece of connection we felt with a girl who was so much more than a name. She was a friend, a confidante, a reflection of the dreams we harbored in our own hearts. And now, as we embark on a journey through the veil of time, let's unravel some lesser known fragments about this iconic show. Who would have thought that behind the scenes, serendipitous events and creative choices converged to mold the world of that girl into the marvel we remember? These tidbits weave an intricate tapestry of the show's inception, casting a light on the brilliance that made it all come to life. So, my fellow wanderer through the reels of nostalgia, join me as we explore the hidden corridors of that girl, a series that stirred something magical within us, inviting us to believe in our dreams and laugh at life's delightful absurdities. Let's dig deep into the trove of trivia, revealing the anecdotes that shaped this beloved show into the masterpiece it is. And now, without further ado, let's set sail on our journey through the universe of that girl, guided by the unseen hands of history, narrated by the whispers of forgotten moments, and Times Square's theatrical dance with that girl 1966 series unveils Broadway's chronological dance in the bustling epicenter of New York's vibrant theater district. The opening credits of the 1966 TV series that girl provided not only a glimpse into Anne Mary's aspiring actress life, but also a chronological dance of Broadway's changing marquee landscape. Amid the luminous chaos of Times Square, and portrayed by the effervescent Marlo Thomas, strolls past marquees that harbor whispers of Broadway's ebbs and flows. One particular sequence echoes the theatrical chronicles of the time, a trifecta of productions that momentarily converged in 1966 yet never graced the stage simultaneously. Philadelphia, here I come took its final bow on October 1st, making way for the rise of Cabaret on December 20th. Swiftly thereafter, Neil Simon's The Star-Spangled Girl claimed its opening night on December 21st. A delightful twist of fate ensured that these three distinct narratives etched their own chapters in the annals of theater history. The serendipitous separation of these plays encapsulates the heartbeat of Broadway's ceaseless reinvention, where stories converge and diverge in a perpetual cadence. As Anne's strides mirror the passage of time, they also immortalize the ephemeral nature of live theater, where moments are fleeting, yet eternally resonant. While the spotlight on that girl dimmed with the conclusion of its original live-action run, Anne Mary's story found an unexpected encore in the realm of animation. A Sunday morning special titled That Girl in Wonderland, brought to life by Rankin and Bass, painted Anne's world with vibrant hues. This whimsical animated rendition aired on ABC in 1973 two years after the curtain had descended on the live-action series. In a testament to the enduring charm of the character, Anne-Marie continued to captivate hearts even as her original incarnation faded from the screen. According to Marlo Thomas, the on-screen dynamic between Anne and her father, Lou, was a gentle reflection of her own relationship with her father, Danny. This heartfelt connection infused the show with a genuine warmth that resonated with viewers. Just as the Broadway marquees changed, the series encapsulated the ever-shifting tapestry of human relationships, echoing the age-old adage that the more things change, the more they remain the same. In the grand tapestry of television history, that girl remains a luminous thread, woven through the fabric of time. Through Anne Mary's journey, we witness not only the chronicles of a young woman's pursuit of her dreams, 
but also the dance of Broadway's marquee lights, the enduring magic of animation, and the authenticity of familial bonds. As the series fades into the backdrop of nostalgia, its legacy endures, a testament to the resounding impact of a spirited girl navigating the world, one Broadway marquee at a time. In the original unaired pilot of the beloved 1966 TV series That Girl, a surprising twist awaited viewers. Ted Bessel's character, once named Donald Blue Sky, was intended to be Anne's agent, rather than the familiar magazine reporter, Hollinger. A departure from the final storyline, this early incarnation offered a glimpse into the creative process of the show's makers. In a little-known narrative choice, Blue Sky explained his unique last name by tracing his lineage back to his Cherokee Indian heritage. The portrayal, had it persisted, could have added a distinctive layer of diversity to the show's cast. Harold Good and Penny Santon rounded out Anne's family circle, playing the roles of her parents. Interestingly, the name of the magazine that Donald worked for was revealed to be Newsview Magazine. Although this detail may have been overshadowed by the eventual show's evolution, it showcases the meticulous world-building that often goes into crafting a successful television series. One of the most intriguing behind-the-scenes revelations involves the original concept for the show's finale. Initially, the plan was to have Anne and Donald walk down the aisle in a heartwarming conclusion. However, Marlo Thomas, the show's lead, took a stand against this idea. She firmly believed that such an ending would misrepresent women's aspirations, reducing them to a singular goal of marriage. Thomas' refusal to endorse this message is a testament to the progressive ideals that that girl often embodied. In retrospect, these lesser-known tidbits from the show's early stages offer a glimpse into the creative evolution of that girl. They reveal the dynamic interplay between the creator's intentions and the final product that captured the hearts of viewers. Marlo Thomas' conviction, especially, reflects the show's commitment to breaking traditional molds and pushing boundaries in an era when such actions were revolutionary. With every twist and turn, that girl continues to be a touchstone for TV history enthusiasts, and a reminder that even the seemingly lighthearted can carry profound meaning. Marlo Thomas' glamorous secret, false eyelashes galore on that girl in the glitzy world of television. The 1966 series that girl shimmered with style and sass, but behind the scenes, there was a secret to its leading lady's glamorous gaze. Marlo Thomas, the iconic Anne Marie of the show, donned not one, but two sets of false eyelashes to achieve her signature wide-eyed look. While viewers tuned in for the charm and charisma of the show, it was Thomas' dedication to her character's image that added a touch of Hollywood mystique. Thomas' beauty regimen may have been a closely guarded secret, but one aspect of the show that wasn't initially meant to be a recurring feature became an unforgettable hallmark. The running gag of characters referring to Anne as that girl at the end of the pre credit sequences was originally intended for the pilot episode alone. Skepticism about its sustainability led the creators to doubt its longevity. Yet, against the odds, this catchy phrase weaved its way into the fabric of the series, becoming a familiar refrain that resonated with audiences throughout the show's run. As the series evolved, so did its opening themes, an unsung hero of the show's memorable allure. Across five seasons, that girl boasted three distinct opening themes, each reflecting the changing spirit of the times. Season one introduced a subdued instrumental sequence, which gave way to the now familiar upbeat, jazzy swing for seasons two to four. But it was the fifth season that witnessed a lyrical transformation, inspired by the success of the newly debuted Mary Tyler Moore show. Renowned composer Earl Hagen orchestrated all these musical transitions, solidifying his mark on television history. The significance of that girl extends beyond its catchy jingles and glamorous aesthetics. It's a testament to the unexpected magic that can emerge when creative minds collaborate against their own doubts. Marlo Thomas' dual false eyelashes might have been her little secret, but the enduring impact of the show's catchphrases and evolving themes remains an open secret cherished by television enthusiasts and nostalgia buffs alike. So, while Anne Mary's adventures is that girl charmed viewers, the real charm lay in the show's ability to defy expectations, all the while celebrating the timeless art of reinvention. Misstep in geography, unraveling the inconsistency of that girl in the annals of classic television. Few series have captured the vivacity of 1960s New York quite like that girl. The show's charm emanated from its titular character, Anne Marie, portrayed by Marlo Thomas, and her journey to make it big in the Big Apple. 
However, a keen-eyed viewer can't help but notice a geographic inconsistency that slipped through the cracks in Season 1, Episode 11, titled What's in a Name. A peculiar misstep in continuity becomes apparent. And ever the aspiring actress contemplates adopting the stage name Marie Brewster, derived from her hometown Brewster, New York. Interestingly, this inadvertent nod to her roots raises eyebrows when her father, Lou Marie, dubs himself Hollinger Toledo using a similar principle. The implication is that he hails from Toledo, a detail that clashes with the series' later revelations about the true origins of Anne's beau, Don Hollinger. While that girl transpired in the bustling heart of New York City, this narrative hiccup is a curious instance of continuity oversight. Despite her father's brief Toledo alter ego, Don Hollinger and his family are resolutely rooted in St. Louis, Missouri, not Toledo, Ohio, as suggested in the show's early moments. The sitcom's endearing portrayal of Anne's escapades and its candid depiction of urban life remain hallmarks of the era. Nevertheless, the glitch in Anne's father's geographical memory serves as a reminder of the intricate dance between storytelling and consistency that even the most beloved shows must navigate. As the series that girl continues to be cherished by generations old and new, the inadvertently incongruous tale of Brewster, Toledo, and St. Louis endures as a testament to the intricacies of television production. A small misstep in geography, it turns out, can become an indelible part of cultural lore. As we bid adieu to the vibrant world of that girl, we find ourselves not just saying farewell to a TV series, but to a part of our lives that has been woven into the tapestry of our memories. The charming escapades of Anne Marie and her dreams have resonated with us in ways we might not even fully comprehend. The series has been a delightful time capsule, transporting us back to a time of innocence and aspiration. As you reflect on your personal connection with that girl, let your thoughts meander through the streets of New York alongside Anne Marie, feel the warmth of her relationships, and perhaps rediscover a piece of your own youthful enthusiasm. Did you chuckle at her whimsical predicaments, or did you see a reflection of your own journey in her pursuit of a creative career? Each episode, a chapter in the book of our lives, inviting us to remember the moments that made us smile, laugh, and even ponder. Your memories are a treasure trove waiting to be shared. What was your favorite episode? Did you find inspiration in Anne's courage to chase her dreams? Or did you resonate with her ups and downs, her trials and triumphs? Share your thoughts, your emotions, and the laughter that girl brought into your world. Let's celebrate this timeless series not just as viewers, but as storytellers, weaving our own anecdotes into the fabric of its legacy. Thank you for taking this nostalgic journey with me. Your time and interest are deeply appreciated as we come together to honor the charm and impact of that girl. Keep those memories alive, for they are the sparks that connect us across time. Until we embark on another journey of remembrance and reflection, let's hold on to the magic of that girl and the stories it ignited within us. Warmly, your name.